Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Zoners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Daniel today wrote another diary about Azure's blob storage. Now, in the past, Daniel has already written about exposed blob storage and how it's often being abused, just like the good old Amazon AWS S3 storage. But uh, lately, Daniel did spot an uptick in brute forcing of uh, these blob names. And one thing he looked at is, well, uh, how does an attacker know if a blob exists or doesn't exist? And turns out there is the good old difference in error messages, uh, where you get a different error message back if a blob does exist or if it doesn't exist. Well, on the defensive side, still a good idea uh, to not have public accessible blobs uh, deployed. But uh, Microsoft also has now a specific alert. It's still labeled as a preview and anonymous scan of public storage containers. You can enable that in the Azure Security Center and it will not just alert you that someone is scanning for blobs, but will also give you a list of terms that were used, uh, like for example, you know, block or uh, accounting and the like that the attacker used to brute force the blob's name. And if you're using an Android phone, chances are that the system on a chip, the CPU essentially inside the phone is made by Qualcomm. Now a Qualcomm in order to communicate within its modem that is actually responsible for the cellular connectivity and to communicate also between components on this system on a chip, they're using something called the Qualcomm mobile station modem interface or short. QMI. QMI is a proprietary protocol, but Checkpoint went ahead to reverse engineer it and surprise, it found only one vulnerability. Now, the protocol itself uses a lot of these time length value based messages, of course, known for uh, calculating lengths wrong and such. Uh, these uh, type of messages are often implemented uh, not quite right. And that's exactly what happens here. Now, since this happens essentially within the modem of the phone, an attacker who is able to exploit this vulnerability would be able to take over the modem, eavesdrop on calls or also intercept messages sent by the phone. A patch for this vulnerability has to come from your phone's vendor. It's not clear how widely the patch that Qualcomm has released has already been rolled out by various uh, phone vendors. And Google over the last few years has done a lot to make a two-factor authentication more popular and easier to use, for example, with its Google Authenticator app that has become somewhat of a standard. Now, Google wants to go a step further and in the future, now they didn't really specify how soon this will happen, to automatically enroll users in two-step verification. Now, two-step verification is not necessarily the uh, Google Authenticator. Uh, they offer a number of options, uh, like, for example, using the Google app on a phone where you get a pop-up that really just have to tap in order to verify that you're currently attempting to log in to a Google uh, property. It also looks like uh, they are going to include WebAuthn in this, uh, which is something that uh, Google has been supporting now for about at least a year, I would think. That's of a technology that I have a lot of hope for because it's one of those open standards that works now across a number of different operating systems and devices. And with Signal getting a lot of press for finding vulnerabilities in Celebrite's mobile forensic software, it's no surprise that other researchers are trying to also find vulnerabilities in Celebrite. And it looks like Matt Bergen of CoreLogic was successful in finding yet another flaw in the software. 
More details will be made available at Black Hat Asia on Friday, so uh, today, uh, but uh, according uh, to the press release at least, Matt was able to create an application that will factory reset a phone if it detects that Celebrite software is attempting to copy data. Well, I think that just tells you that your forensic software, just like any other software, you have to keep it up to date and make sure that it's fully patched. Of course, in particular, if you're using it to create evidence for court, Celebrite has addressed these vulnerabilities, so fixes are available. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.